Uh, hi, uh, welcome Amar and Vakar. So great to have you here. Uh, you know, this is these are events we do uh, once every month or so, and we are excited to have you here today. Uh, let me just begin with a quick introduction of what we're trying to do here today, and then I would love to quickly introduce you to the audience, and then we can go from there. So uh, I I am the CEO at Team Lease HCM, and as we build and scale our human capital management platforms, we typically invite business leaders and HR leaders to talk about various aspects of work-related life, which also has an impact on the kind of platforms we build for our customers. Uh, very happy to have Amar Paul Singh here. Uh, like we were talking a little while back, Amar is VP, Vice President of Strategy at Impressions, which is a facility management organization, pretty large organization with over 20,000 workforce. Uh, interestingly, Amar has uh, worked in IT before, but is also uh, he was also heading HR at uh, Impressions in his earlier avatar. And he's been there for many years. So I think that's a rare kind of tenure that you get to see in the 21st century. So that's Amar for you. Uh, Vakar was still recently HR leader at Milk Basket. He's earlier worked at Udan and Aditya Birla Group. So that's Vakar for you. Vakar is a, a pass out of TISS in the year 2004. Am I right, Vakar, or am I getting that wrong? No, it's, it's, a, it's a 50. Yeah, 2015. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. I just got the decade wrong. Okay. Uh, nice. So uh, let's spend about, uh, let's spend maybe the next uh, 45 minutes to one hour. And the subject uh, Amar and Vakar, we really wanted to pick up today on was the impact of employee recognition on morale and productivity. At first glance, it's a no brainer. I mean, what could you debate about it, right? I think it's the most obvious thing you want to drive morale and productivity at him, uh, through employee recognition. But I guess from my own experience, when it comes to actually implementing this, driving this, measuring the results of it, I think there are a whole lot of open questions and debatable points that we can come up with, right? And uh, I want to, I want to maybe open with a slightly. Uh, a question which should invite some amount of debate. Is employee recognition more of an art or more of a science? Uh, obviously, it's both. But which it is, which is it more of? I think that's what I would like to open with. And Amar, maybe I can start with you. Your views on this. Wow. OK, so that is really a, a <laughs> tough first ball to face, I think. <laughs> But fantastic. You see, uh, I can cheat and say that it's both. Yes, and not allowed. No, no. You don't get marks for saying that. <laughs> not allowed, OK. <laughs> so I think, you know, while there's certainly a scientific aspect to it in terms of, I mean, the HR, as I said, as you mentioned uh, very nicely, but I'm not a you know, formal HR specialist. So maybe Vakar can speak to the science part of the story. But I would say that, you know, one important part is that in life nothing is black and white and there's always a little balancing which has to be done there are in a business there'll be multiple constraints there'll be multiple expectations and you have to balance all those so in the case of implementing of a program you have to choose the mix of is it going to be monetary is it going to be non-monetary how much to whom that's very important when setting up the framework for the reward and recognition uh, there'll be constraints like budget and uh, even if it's non-monetary then Time is always going to be there. You have to budget for that as well. So how much time you can devote to it? You're running an organization. The operation teams are also busy with that. So those are the areas. And then lastly, the one area which I think is very important, and that is scientific also, but uh, the, and that has to be recognized, and that is measurement, which you mentioned. So, so that part is scientific that you must have some mechanism which formally measures, because you can also say, OK, we felt good about it. That should not be an art. But I think the other parts need to balance out things. And balancing acts are always more works of art, like we see the guys on tightrope balancing on cycles, etc. So that part is the art. And there's a small segment which is, uh, I think, purely scientific. So while I didn't strictly cheat, I've also <laughs> done a balancing act there. Right? Thanks, Amar. You gave a pretty, uh, I mean, your bias or your weightage was pretty clear. Vakar, yeah. Amar said yeah. it's yeah. more of art and less of science. Your views. You are the HR specialist yeah. in the room. Yeah. 
so i would say it's a mix but in a diff in a phases wise right when you create a program it has to be based on it, it should be you know scientifically grounded for example each recommendation program has an objective right it could be an objective to maybe drive the group performance right it could be objective to drive individual performance right different setups will have you know different uh, objectives through which you will try to do it right it could be a kind of peer to peer recommendation program where you want people to you know kind of engage engage frequently you want to inculcate collaborative behavior right so peer to peer will probably you know matter so there is a science around that right which solution that you go about how we when it comes to implementation right there 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 cannot be one science right so you have to understand the context of organization on which we operate right you also have to understand people right not all uh, so you can't take the you know uh, one program let's imagine peer to peer recommendation program right when you're going to the senior management you can't have the same agenda or you can't go in the same way right you have to understand the organization and then align leaders so that they also back it up right art is there how do you convince people that the program that you are proposing it fits well into the organizational demand or organizational prerogative right that's where the art is and that's where also the maturity comes in over the time you have spent a lot of time in the organization you understand how to navigate how to get buy in right all rnr will probably do not bear the fruit if or if not all leaders are on board you know it's very important because that's where really largely i i was reading somewhere uh, you know in term of uh, a study that largely employees prefer recognition to come from their managers skipper managers or cxos that's where the most impact of recognition programs are and for them to you really buy in that's where the implementation game and i would say the art comes into picture so i would say it's it's a bit it's it's a mix of both how we in in phases wise i am saying and art is something you know i would also say it's a personal thing right so you understand the context of organization and then you navigate you drive and then you push so as a hr i would say it's very important or any person right in a organization it could be uh, it could even arrive from the business side right, that we have to build some kind of internet program the art is in implementing it correctly can i can i can i just build on what you said vakar to say that maybe at smaller organizations it is possibly more art but as you go into larger larger organizations and as you drive reward and recognition programs over the long term over higher scale and higher complexity uh, and you tracking the results of your efforts or your investments it becomes more and more science could i say something like that or no no you can say it and you are right as you scale a piece which is very important is standardization right and standardization cannot be an art it has to be a science it's operationally efficient thing that's why we say something has to be standardized right so that it is always same in each location each each person right so when it comes to standardization and that will always be the larger game for any scaling up program right there it's a science but maybe even in a bigger organization if you are coming up with a new rnn program or something you know some interesting concept that's where maybe art plays an important role in convincing people bring, bringing people on the board making them curious right there are a lot of things as as my in professional around 9 10 years of experience i have seen a lot of things that we would have probably done it but because of in our own grand I mean, we could we missed it and the business came out saying that we should do it so right so those kind of thing also happens that you know uh, so so inputs will always come you need to be ready and then explore it in a artistic manner however you are rightly said uh, when you are doing a scale you also need to build systems right and system may be some kind of hrtic solution it could be some kind of mix of you know hr and people management or program management kind of skill there of course it's a proper science because that's where when you scale up you are putting a lot of money even if it's a non monetary thing there's a time angle to it right so it's a time effort that everybody will be putting senior management will be investing some time all people will be investing you maybe you'll be booking some big uh, seminar halls to do thing even though even though it may maybe just you know peer recognition or maybe it's it's a certification getting right but there is a time and money involved and therefore you want to do it structure it scientifically so that you can calculate the roi coming back to what amar was saying right that you have to be scientific only only then you will be able to measure it correctly so i think you're right as we scale up 
the science will get into the play and it would have larger say as to how do we scale up one area where i uh, am i would like to ask that you design a program and maybe you design a program using a lot of scientific inputs but in my own experience amar the way you deliver it that particular moment when you call out somebody in your team and say hey buddy great job done that particular moment is pure art i mean it has to have soul it have to have a uh, genuine uh, emotion behind it and it has to feel impactful to the to the employee so to me that moment is pure art i personally i'm wondering if there is any science involved in that particular moment at all the moment the rubber hits the road yeah i think I think uh, that's true because I think at that time it's a, you know, I I, I, I read uh, this was COVID time I think and uh, COVID time was when we were all getting more time to educate ourselves. I read some study in HBR, and uh, that was around I think 2020 end, where one point which stuck with me was that the messenger is also very important. Like who is the person? I think uh, you know Vakar also mentioned that point that. it's important to know who delivers someone from the leadership cxo level etc which you mentioned that very valid point so the messenger is uh, very very important you know, whether it's peer group because if it, it's a group effort maybe a peer group they can do it internally or their team leader can do it but if you want it to go across the entire enterprise then you want c suite level uh, interaction to happen in fact uh, we were lucky we were with a major uh, international customer and uh, they had their own uh, you know they extended their own r and r program to our team as well and someone had flown in from australia and was present over there and that really shows the force of commitment that yes there's uh, inclusivity there's the voice of every single worker those messages you know you can put it on billboards and put them in the hallways but i think the action itself speaks much louder so that's a very valid point i think that you know that's in in, in the moment and that is really like investing that much effort it's an art i mean dedication is there and then who speaks and how they speak it becomes important so that that's what i i would agree with you there my next question is and this is why we like to bring in business guys into these conversations so amar okay. when you and your ceo go into board meetings or you're doing long term strategy conversations with your board and your senior management does recognition and rewards ever figure in the strategic pivots my question is is rewards and recognitions important enough to be called a strategic pivot or is it more of a tactical lever that typically the hr functions and leader use to motivate their teams okay so uh see i think for us uh we are a distributed uh, workforce you know and so so the things happen more closer to the ground than they happen up in the uh, you know rarefied air of uh, board meetings etc so these conversations do not come up regularly but yes i mean uh, some level of discussion does happen about how results are coming that's to say the outcomes are definitely discussed that you know if we say i mean we would typically look at a couple of productivity simple productivity metrics right i mean one is of course that what is your unit revenue that's one part but apart from that things like employee turnover because we are essentially manpower that that's what it is so employee turnover what are we doing towards that what are the things which move that in a positive direction etc and we are quite lucky on that number compared to our peer group we've assessed that then the other area which we look at typically is error rates so is there rework happening error rates are there it's like if it's documentary work how much error rate is in that if it is work happening at work sites do we get rework requests things like those so the outcomes definitely are there and they are informed by you know what are the levers which we pull to ensure these things monitoring maybe one incentive program one but definitely are not becomes one part of it but it is a conversation but i think the more is that the outcomes are more discussed than maybe specifics that's the actual answer darant right. uh, so i will ask that same question to vakar but in a slightly different manner i'll maybe state my hypothesis my hypothesis is rewards and recognition is a tactical lever which people leaders use but is not a strategic lever for an organization 
Would you agree with that? To a certain extent, I would. So I'll just, you know, kind of give a couple of examples that I have, you know, seen. Um, I have been fortunate enough to work with a large set of distributed workforce. Way back in Ayurveda, I was with Plant. And then, of course, with Odan and, and Milk Basket, largely, you know, working across fulfillment center. So you were right. I have seen that, you know, in, in, in our business reviews, uh, whenever the, when any particular hub, fulfillment center or any center, you know, they have done well. Of course, uh, business leader has themselves asked that let's reward people, right? Do some, evolve, some evolve, um, uh, small events. Let's pick those people who have done really well. So just like the, uh, just like Amar was saying, we also had, you know, timely deliveries, uh, error rate, packing rate, all these have become really important. And customers themselves, you know, give a shout out to us on LinkedIn, Twitter. They have been doing it, right? And it has started way back from even COVID days, right? That's where people like things started, you know, uh, kind of commending all companies. And that is still continues. And whenever that happened, uh, leaders obviously also want to recognize people, right? So because they want the same behavior to continue. However, I have not seen this as starting, you know, uh, coming on its own, you know, that let's let's build something. We have seen the performance happening and then as a reaction that let's reward people. But I have not seen that, okay, let's build a, a strong r and pillar. So that performance happens. I think when that happens, then we can say that it's more like a strategic, you know, pillar. Right now, it's largely tactical. You're right, but there are few leaders who have seen the uh, seen the fruits, and they typically endorse and advocate such things. So I think it's also a journey. Uh, luckily for me, I have seen those very mature leaders, and it, it, as you work more and more, you realize that you know it, it, its impact. And one of the thing I will just go back to the question that you're asking. You know that in terms of facilitation and everything, I think when you work with a larger distributed workforce, right? And these are likely minimum wage or probably a little bit higher than right, right? For them, even a small event matters a lot. So actually, your ROI is really high, right? So, so given a given hub may have given you, you know, a, a top line performed really well with the same constraint, right? You may not have more people, so your productivity has increased. And you do a small event, your business head or regional head comes, that gives a boost for next three months. So, uh, so people know that it's happening. It's just that, you know, some when, uh, and you are right, a strategic means it has to come from CEO. It has to be agenda in every meeting, right? What we have done and what is the ROI. That perhaps that agenda item is not permanent. That is the, not, and that needs to be permanent. And uh, as a, for example, attrition is, is something which is always permanent, right? Business leaders wants to know that what is attrition because it, at least in their mind, they know it has a uh, direct impact in, in, you know, in, in deliveries, right? A product company will have deliveries get you know stunted if they have lost good candidates right uh, hiring becomes important in terms of expansion right so those are permanent line items in your business reviews weekly be monthly business reviews quarterly i don't think rnr is a is, is a is a regular fixture in those things so that once that happens then probably i can say that yes it is it has become a strategic point Actually, listening to you, maybe I should rephrase my question, and I think you've answered it. My question actually should have been, is RNR a strategic pillar or is it a cultural pillar? And I think listening to you, I'm realizing it should. it is more of a cultural thing rather than a strategy thing. Yeah. Yes. No, okay. I appreciate absolutely with our perspective. It's done a very eloquent uh, clarification of it. So that's fantastic. Yeah. I have a question for you. You are the HR specialist, Vakar. So let's you, let's put you on the hot spot. Okay, uh, you're working with your business leader. Okay, and he is he is working on his three-year plans or five-year plans or whatever you call them, right? There is a line item which says R and R, one percent of top line. Okay, and he asks you a question, Vakar. How do I decide whether next year, last year, my spends on R and R was one percent of my revenue? or let's say half a percent of my revenue. How do I decide whether next year it should be a couple of percentages or it should actually be a quarter of a percentage of revenue? How do I decide what data point can we look at to help me decide what should be the budget this year? OK. I think you know, uh, your r and ultimately drives, all r programs ultimately drive those two, three. KPIs, right? 
for a fulfillment center there will be a standard kpis right delivery rates your 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 error rate right that typically adds to your ideal bottom line a top line right depending upon what kind of kpi you are picking in right so you have to tie in that amount of investment that you have made in right so i am talking about monetary sense and typically i have seen monetary rois typically are easy to fly you are easy you typically are, you don't have to put so much effort right non monetary is something that you have to convince a lot leaders leaders typically who have seen the, those cycle happen that okay non monetary takes time but eventually it builds the strong culture so cultural aspect as you rightly mentioned in the previous question they typically understand and they probably will align but leaders who may not have seen that right they probably largely have worked on a very strict you know kpis right they made it, they do not have you know even a smaller you know uh, leverage to bring a small maybe quarter of percentage they will typically will be hesitant right so first thing of course how does your rni has given uh, the return on the major kpis and in certain setup like logistic it's easy to capture i'll be very honest it's easy to capture because those kpis are easily you know uh, you, you see the what is the impact is happening and you can even go at a hub level site level thing but for example maybe rnr in a corporate setup it will be harder to do the, those uh, roi aspects uh, so uh, so if you ask me i would first try to build a case from the kpi side that okay last year because of this much of investment we were able to achieve this you know a better than what we what we had targeted that would be my first angle and the second thing is that of course i would also try to bring the cultural angle right because that so, so so there are numerous studies which says that if you have right rnr it also become a good pillar of you know employee you know uh, evp and you have a strong evp it means you also attract good talent so a startup or a, a, or, a or, or a organization which is on a growth path it's very important to all to send right signal to the market that it's a place where you are recognized where you are appreciated and it it's a very uh, today uh, today's gen g and the people millennials it's very important for them that, that they feel appreciated while there are other aspect as well this is a very important aspect so that will also play into the role i am as you are talking there is one question which is popping up in my mind vakar how okay. do you isolate the uh, variable which moved the kpi so let's say yes. most of you talked about okay. error rates or rework rates okay let's say the error rate is dropped from 1% to half a percent how do you isolate and say okay this happened because of rnr not because of your training initiatives not because of new processes that you put in place not because you put in new it systems in place or you gave tablets to your frontline workforce which are now able to track things better how do you isolate the impact on the kpi because of rnr and then how do you decide whether i want to over invest or under invest in and this is a question open to both of you but would love to hear your thoughts on that okay so uh, as i was mentioning you know so i will just uh, share our experience with milk basket and uh, earlier so when i joined and even before that the business has re realized that their refund ratio was really high and that was happening because of error rate right so picking was not happening correctly people were not either there was a mismatch in the item that they ordered and they were delivered something else. so maybe they were sh short one item short two item short and we realized so that directly corresponds to error rate right and this is something that we used to monitor at each table or a packing station right we knew that error was happening and uh, along with the business we came up with a group incentive kind of thing whether there will be certain aspect so there will be a personal uh, level recognition and then of course it was a monetary recognition that will happen to the best packer or a given station or for a given cluster at the same time we also said if at a hub level overall you know error rate drops to to this then this there, then there is a multiplier effect right so we so we kind of kind of kind of took an approach of you know also incentivizing at a group level behavior and we did saw a good level of drop now you can say that of course we also made a process a, you know process level interventions as you said rightly said training uh and and there you have to you know kind of take a very judicious call that attribution right so if there is a refund drop of maybe 5 lakh rupees that you know translates into 5 lakh rupees that means you you are ultimately losing out on that order today you are making an order of 5 lakh rupees every month let's take an example a small example you have to attribute that how much probably would have happened because of the training 
how much would have happened because of you know perhaps uh, because of this this uh, rnr and and one of the approach that i see that probably works when there is when there is an uh, when there is an angle of judgment call right uh, you take all the leaders together eh, and kind of cons- make a consensus that okay maybe 50% improvement is because of the process but at the same time because of rnr also people are putting more effort they are they are becoming more and more attentive right as to how they are doing things right and and that can be again attributed again against uh, kind of correlated against those for maybe there are certain cluster there were a lot of errors and although you have given training to all the clusters all the stations right but you see there is a drastic down in certain places where the error rate was really high right so in that way you kind of kind of attribute kind of correlate and see that there is of course a certain impact so maybe 2.5 lakh 2.5 lakh worth of refund that was happening that you are you have been able to avoid because of rnr program and probably you may have invested 1.5 lakh like in the rnr i'm giving a very you know very 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 uh, drill down version of how things could be at a larger scale the numbers will be really high and uh, and, uh, and and there could be a technology intervention as well maybe sales employees will have you have added cert, certain aspect of technology right so you have to make that call I, I would just share one more example it's not only a certain aspect you say that that is in control of business right maybe training aiding employees some technical intervention there could be even market scenario right so you have enabled sales employee but because of certain external factor also sales could have been picked up right so how do you kind of kind of you know, make the judgment that right so so uh, in the, when there is exact data is not there perhaps what works is that have a council of people senior people who have gone through they have seen multiple cycle and then they sit together and collectively decide that okay that much attribution can be made to the training program that much can be made to the process and system changes and that much can be attributed to external factor maybe your competitor because because of certain other factors may have they, they, there is some issue and because of that you are able to take more pie from the market multiple things can happen interesting thoughts vakar i am going to ask you to respond to that amar two parts now to the roi question what metrics would you typically link uh, rewards and recognition to what are the outcome metrics of the investment that the organization makes into rewards and recognition and second question which vakar dealt with was how do you isolate and attribute the impact on any outcome to specifically rewards and recognitions yeah so actually i mean uh, first of all i think i'll have to uh, modify my initial answer to the very first question and say that no i'm sorry but even the measurement of outputs has to be an art now <laughs> that's one <laughs> thing and you know uh, while vakar was speaking very eloquently on the previous question also like the same question popped up in my mind that there are so many confounding variables how do we attribute right so uh, addressing the isolation part actually because i think that's the real crucial part for me uh, particularly is that because we notice all these points so what you mentioned and for us we have a simple i mean i have a motto which i have sort of pushed down to everyone and that is you know that ultimately in our work it's unskilled labor performing tasks and simple tasks basically but yes training is involved and you know supports involved and but ultimately what happens for the broader part is that tenure of service is the prime mover of quality of service so the longer you can retain the employee the more skill he gets the more familiar he gets to your workflows and the better outcomes come if you lose that employee you are losing a lot more than just the pain of replacing that person mm-hmm. or even the in- intervening lost productivity you have lost enormous amount of n- internal knowledge which is there right so that one aspect but uh again you know i mean i, I was I, i fear this question that how do you do it so i think vakar's answer i'll just steal from that and isolating for us also there's no way to attribute directly i mean if we could do ab testing then yes and i was thinking back that did we ever think about you know before rolling out because we have multiple sites we got around like 1800 sites we could roll it out selectively and see what outcomes come and that could be a scientific study and i'll try to see if we have some av testing possible now that's a lesson for me that how we can make it scientific but we are relying purely on qualitative metrics like apportionment which uh, you saying okay we assume that you know yahan pe ye karne se thoda sa improve hua like for example and uh, the point when vikas was making his point i had one small not disagreement but just clarification here 
because uh, from a reward recognition to incentive these are two slightly different this is a spectrum but it's two different things and we have noticed that there are direct incentive programs for you know group behavior which we can have like absenteeism we can have a reward for regularity things like that these directly impact and we can measure that okay we didn't have it this was the absenteeism level we instituted a mechanism of incentive for attendance and we got directly an outcome for that so those incentive programs are much more measurable but i think rnr is a fairly soft kind of uh, activity and it becomes a little difficult to remove all the confounding variables it has to be a little bit of faith and there again i think uh, vakar's point of getting leadership buy in which he said in the beginning itself was very very important because there is a certain level of faith which is required to do that so if we uh, i think that uh, isolation is not possible we can go by a gut feel but then that's not scientific and it's a hope and a prayer but uh, maybe what we should be doing uh, basis this conversation i would say is that actually do some level of av testing if you have multiple units then you can at least do that and you get a more concrete feedback and that will tell you which programs are delivering a better yield also so there are n number of uh, rnr programs as well i hope that makes I, sense I, and does it answer that part this, this point is interesting in a setup where let's say your entire workforce is let's assume simplistically is entirely based out of a single corporate house the ab becomes a little you 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 have to be a little careful you're doing it for one team not for others but in a distributed setup and especially if you have something like 1800 sites you might be able to do a bit of ab and see okay if i spend more on training versus rnr versus you know processes which one gives you better results huh? that's an interesting thought yeah so that's my learning that's my learning from this seminar <laughs> i really i feel i've learned something right now and i really appreciate that so it's a very insightful question and i don't have a right answer but i think that I, i'll say that <laughs> let's take that home as a question and the ab is of course you don't have to limit it to just rewards and recognition in a setup like that you can extend it to pretty much any variable right so 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 we've done it like i said i've given you examples where we we actually have tested and done the outcome so like attendance uh, rewards those definitely work i mean the move the needle super accurately and other things probably it's more soft but definitely there is an attitudinal thing which we do see i perceive it when i go because i also make it a point to periodically attend these uh, rnr programs at uh, client locations so so it's there but i can't give you a 100% understood. answer understood so, uh, amit i yes, would like to add a point here you know uh, even though we we may not have the roi as a conventional roi where we have you know Uh, input output and then how do how do you want to correlate there are proxies within the organization right that you can pick up right so i was you know before this uh, discussion i was just going through some time back and i saw one of the study where rand stand study and they, they had said that uh, typically 28% of people who leave organization one of the primary motivate uh, motivation for them to leave is they feel uh, they, are, they they feel there is a lack of recognition in the team right now if over the time you have a strong recognition program you are running it and you see that you are able to reduce the number of people who maybe 3 years back they said that i am leaving organization maybe that number is 10% 15% over the time 3 4 years or maybe even 2 years if you do a quarterly kind of you know uh, quarterly kind of you reach out to your ex alumni uh, people who are leaving you do a survey and you see there is a trickle down effect the number is reducing then you can say at least from rnr perspective i am doing something good right you may not have a complete picture exactly money to money how much you are making but at least you have a it kind of intangible benefits coming up that okay now lesser number of people are leaving organization because of the lack of rnr there could be there and other things because of which people may still leave right but at least one area is something that you have ring fenced and that you are working hard so those proxies yeah. can also be, be put and right now as uh, as you rightly said that distributed me to of course it's possible and uh, uh, in our also because of kind of work they are doing right imagine the kind of work which your techies do right technology people are doing that's a highly cognitive task work and then how do you do it you will not be able to you know uh, uh, ki- kind of you know uh, trim away Absolutely. that okay this is the impact isolation or trim away that this is the impact of something maybe 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 because we you change your technology stack right because of that alone you may have you know a significant impact in terms of customer you know a customer uh, experience on your app right and at the same time you also you have also run some kind of rnr program right so it's very hard to isolate those kind of things in real time right you it may happen 
after some time that you have some such and more data over the time that you may have done similar tech aggregations multiple times then you see though okay generally these tech aggregation give you 25 percent of uptake so red stocks because of a code level improvement and that code level improvement happened because people are feel more recognized right it's a too much of a stretch so so proxies proxies are something nice that we can pick yeah. up got it i think that's good and yeah as i said we pick we have these three metrics which are there like turnover error rates in terms of our documentation compliance things like that and then rework at work sites so for us these are super critical ones so it's a very good uh, point for uh, i'll throw the next question back at you omar uh, and it has two parts so rewards and recognitions to drive performance versus rewards and recognitions to drive values which one in your opinion organizations mostly focus on currently and what is the ideal mix okay so speaking from experience i'd say that we all focus on performance because it gives us tangible results right and uh, the only thing is that perhaps that is less sticky I, i mean i'm talking philosophically i have no data to back me up but i just say philosophically that while r and r's which are directly linked to say performance or productivity the gains will remain while the program is instituted and to the extent that the program is having a tangible perceived reward right a perceived value for that reward and i think that when you have r and r's which are focused towards values where you call in people together you have a huddle you may recognize one or two people in the team specifically but you all at least congregate together and share experiences and have those conversations just simply you know not work related non work conversations and all that brings a bonding and i think that even if you do it at a lesser cadence but if you do it properly and you do it at you know with a good heart then that has a long term impact which you also mentioned the word culture so i think by driving culture that in, gives you a longer lasting positive impact overall so both are important and if you talk about mix i think uh, you see small organizations need to invest where the reward is the result is coming back in so when you're smaller maybe you should focus more on performance based programs but as you grow and you want to have an organization which is growing uh, with the same values and uh, performance expanding over multiple areas and units and we transfer people from a to b when we're expanding so you, we want them to carry forward the same perspective so there i think for larger organizations expanding organizations programs which drive value are more important so rather than just recognition of one individual simply the act of getting together and having that connect and building interpersonal rapport will probably uh, add a lot of value so as you grow this area become more and more important that's my thinking so that makes sense i think uh, to me at least it appeals that larger organization as they grow as they have people in different functions different geographies you know it, the organization becomes more complex focus on value should ideally increase yeah. but but before i move back, the unit. but before i move back to akar just one question so is the only reason why organizations spend more or focus more on performance rather than values is it that the results are tangible and it's easier to measure is that the primary reason akar i am biased to say yes I mean, that's what I feel. That you know, and and that's why you know the expense when we talk about R and R versus incentive. Incentive programs are budgeted quite well, right? Because there's a direct. This is what you do, and this is what you get. And then R and R, I think it's it's basically all incentivization, right? So this is just semantics in one respect, but it's not semantics in the sense that we know that incentive programs on are on specific outcomes which are monetary in nature. and i think r and r is more soft in any case so it's really difficult to measure and that's why we give it a different semantic label i think that's why it's really being done uh, that's all i really can say about that vakari your thoughts on performance focus versus values focus and which ones do organization focus more on and which ones or in what context should they focus more on performance versus focus for a, from an r and r perspective so i have a couple of points first i would like to you know carry forward from what amar was saying that indeed it's little easy when you are you can directly correlate right as you said incentive aspect it's very easy to do it right when you are uh, 
running some program based on value, it's also very hard to evaluate. It's not easy uh, because you know it, it, it involves interpretation aspect, right? When it comes to some KPIs, it's easy, right? Somebody maybe operation entire operation leadership has agreed that these are three core tenants. And that's how we'll judge people. If person crosses this threshold, then he becomes eligible for the recognition or incentive, whatever the, uh, that, uh, you know, whatever we, we have chosen to reward him. However, when it comes to value, it's very hard, right? In very in a bigger organization, I've also seen, seen, you know, group of people, maybe kind of value council would ultimately evaluate. So your manager or business uh, business leader may, may be the second level of endorsement. He will do first level done by the manager. And then, of course, the business leader Maybe it's a south zone. Maybe it's a country head kind of person. But there is a, then again there is a value there is an evolution council who again judge it, uh, and, and and perhaps bigger organization has are able to do it because they have more owners to drive cultural aspect. Right? Each organization has a zone different trajectory. Bigger organization for them cultural aspect is very important because now they are also in a stage of protecting the business. In a high growth business you are growing and then you can easily correlate what somebody has done it's a smaller organization contribution can be easily measured uh, there are not so many people who may disagree okay this person has not done this person has done right but how in bigger organization uh, when uh, like for example conglomerates who have developed reliant uh, and uh, and i Tibilla group bigger like microsoft google they have so many people right and they also want to kind of preserve their culture at least the intent is Culture, uh, although I think culture is a very dynamic concept, and whether you want or not, you culture evolve over the time, right? Yeah. Uh, so cultural aspect for them becomes really important. However, the most important thing: how do you do it? Do you mm -hmm. have bandwidth to invest that much of time to so that interpretation becomes easy? It's just like competency framework, right? I may assume that this person is very competent. Other person may come from the you know outside. He will say that the person is competent, but not as much as you are saying, right? Because now we are getting into subjective evaluation. So a bigger organization over the time because they have so much of research internally done they have repository they have archives that you can you know check back and rely upon that okay over the time we have seen these are three things which really matter these three uh, uh, value ex exhibited means that person is doing really well maybe a start small startups or early age companies may they do not have that much of repository they do not have i would say tac tacit knowledge developed over the time so they are also little short, uh, short on that aspect as well. But I think most sustainable aspect is, of course, as Amar was saying, is the culture. Because even if you take away that recognition, once the culture has been you know, imbibed, it will continue to aid the organization over the time. Because that becomes very innate to the people. But when it comes to incentive, you take away the money aspect. right? You may see a dip. It may happen. I mean, it, may, it, it can go both way. But eventually, it will taper down. So you have to continually put some kind of, you know, uh, some kind of monetary aspect to sustain yeah. it. Value yeah. in value aspect, you don't have to. Once built mm -hmm. and kind of reinforced, it stays with the organization. It stays with the people, with the team, and it goes very long. Uh, you know, it has a very long runway. So what I hear is RNR for performance is a bit like paid marketing versus uh, RNR for Values is more like organic or brand marketing. Huh? You invest one side, you get reap returns for many years. Okay, pretty interesting. I have a very interesting question from somebody in the audience. Okay, and maybe I'll throw it to through Vakar first. Can employee recognition programs help motivate employees to return to the office from remote work? <laughs> this is it's a million dollar question post COVID. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I mean it just goes back to you know what we discussed, uh, something uh, monetary aspect. Although that's a lighter win, uh, I uh, I don't think so. In a sustainable way, it can be done, right? That you create some kind of RNR where people will always be motivated to come to the office, right? Whether you come, to, whether you you are remote first organization or you are a you know uh, back to office, you have adopted maybe like Amazon, you have adopted that now. Everybody has to operate from. That is a very fundamental. Uh, it's a fundamental thing of the given company it. culture. Given company culture, right? So if it's a culture which is driven by top, where uh, leadership has decided that no, everybody has to be there, right? 
and based on their subjective evolution i'm not saying that they, they have a, they have evolution in, in a wrong way or right way right if they and it is something that has to be abided by everyone then of course uh, whatever rnr you create it's largely people are coming out of fear right because leadership has mandated it right however if it's a, if it's a company where even though leadership think right they think and it's a company where it's not very hard hard and fast rule that you have to come and you have given a chance that you may so there are companies a lot of companies where they have a chance you can operate from the office you can operate from there rnr play a very important role that okay you want to nudge people right some people are coming some are not so how do we ensure that everybody comes right their rnr may play play a role but if you want rnr to solve your panacea you know it becomes a you know one one solution that okay to drive everybody that may not happen at least based on my understanding amar is this uh, something that you have battled at post covid in your organization getting people to come back to office and mm. no because actually you know the nature of our work is such that a major part of force was working in any case in the field in during covid also the office staff uh, yes like the finance teams or back end like hr support teams also Uh, got a little used to working from home, so we still give them that opportunity. But uh, ultimately, uh, again, uh, for us, you know, the majority of the manpower pool is working in the sites, right? So the backend office staff is uh, concentrated over about maybe twenty, twenty-five offices. Majority are like the five regional offices and our corporate office. So we all know that we have to work together, and it's much more comfortable to work here. But we now that option has to be given that people periodically do want to work from home, and we do that. We didn't face this problem, so I don't have really major insights on this. Yeah, got it. Uh, let me take one more question before before I wrap this up. So, uh, and this is very topical. I have been drawn into some conversation in the recent few days about something happened at EY. Something happened in one or two more organizations where you know, yeah, yeah, right. Somebody was overstressed, and so the question is: I got a very interesting quote from my team here. The quote says, "Unhealthy recognition fosters toxic workplace cultures," and I guess the EY case is probably something basically where the where the recognition is for putting in extra hours or stretching beyond. so could it also have some negative impacts where it drives the wrong kind of or you know without realizing it drives drives the wrong kind of behavior which has short term benefits but longer term damages so could could that some of this be also uh at play one organize which some organization has to be careful about Yeah, well, there are always perverse incentives, and which lead to perverse outcomes. That that is uh, there with any incentive program. We've all probably faced that challenge, you know. And people want to game those things also. But I think uh, in the cases you have cited, this goes way beyond any uh, particular program. This is absolutely embedded in the uh, operational model of the organization that you hire young people. You run them through a ringer, <laughs> extract the juice, <laughs> and the rest goes out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's my thinking. So, Amit, I think I have a rather different point of view on this, right? Uh, mm. Like, uh, even if you 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 are rewarding productivity, right? People going over and above, right? Maybe even you come as doing that. A good reward and recognition program will even allow a good feedback, right? That mm. okay, in a certain quarter you may work, but then your partner, your senior manager should highlight, okay, thank you, good work. Now take. Don't continue to because you will ultimately burn out, right? So, if any perverse incentive or perverse R and R will not be sustainable for any organization, and I I think I mean these things are generally not documented in any organization, but this becomes part of a cultural aspect, right? If you continue to do this, if you continue to behave in this way, you will be in good books of your manager or your seniors, right? You may be rewarded. You are a, you know uh, you you are a, you you may get the COE COs. uh kind of you know best best sales person for the quarter i think but while this is a very extreme example i remember also the sales incentive that used to happen in byju's although i am not worked there but the kind of pressure that they used to create on the parents right so the kind of tactics that they used to use they could have also done little better i am not saying that you know it's really bad 
or everybody is selling, but they could have done a little bit better, right? But also because of pressure and because of targets, they ended up doing that. So, uh, and so ultimately, it will not be sustainable for any hmm. organization. I think that point about sustainability is very valid. A very generalized example I can give is what happens in most companies, typically in sales organizations, in the last quarter or the last month of the year. You put in incentives to drive sales big time, and then April is an extremely slow month. So if you look at the ROI of that incentive over a two-month period, not just March, but March plus April, mm -hmm. chances are you've got nothing. Whatever you gained in March, you've given yeah, it. So, you know, I, I completely agree. I think those... Uh, you know I, those programs should be sustainable and should be driving the right behavior from not just a very not not just from not just from the duration of the program but even beyond it i i know i'm extending on time a little bit amar vakar but i am tempted to tempted to take this one question from renu gautam could you share an example where an organization implemented an innovative recognition program that significantly boosted productivity or morale Anything that comes to your mind which you have specially liked? See, uh, uh, Vakar, you want to comment first because uh, you also, like being a specialist, you'll have it. I have an anecdote and I'll take it up later if you want to take something so first. I have seen multiple instances and I would say that my first exposure, right, in this uh, RNR, and which is more like an informal RNR, so peer to peer recognition, I would say. I, I was not aware of this, right? I worked briefly in Tata Global Beverage. And that's where they had launched this, this uh, platform where people can recognize. And that was early days, right? I'm talking about 15, 2015 kind of thing. And right now, there are so many platforms, right? And even you can in cash, so points, gamification. That was early days. And I saw very good you know, uh, uptake and people uh, taking things in very good stride and really enjoying it, right? And uh, and I had you know conversation with few of the few of the people, you know, and they said that it helped them. Uh, build a good camaraderie in the team, even cross-functional expo uh, kind of, you know, uh, because they are also appreciating you. Earlier, there was no platform and typically you will miss it, right? You may not, you would, you would have wanted it. Maybe it's a de decentralized people working across different geographies, but this platform allows them to recognize people, right? And that build friendship also. Okay. So I think, you know, in terms of uh, morale aspect, I think it helps. I think it helps and over the time i think technology has you know progressed a lot today you have much large larger interplay i think which technology is enabling uh and and we have also larger number of uh, you know organizations which are spread across geographies today especially tech technology companies they're working in, in a very similar uh, where people are spread across uh, countries so i think recognition helps uh and in, in different uh, levels of recognition, be it peer-to-peer, -peer, be it your managerial, very formal managerial and CXO level recognition, and even recognition in term of you know the kind of opportunities people get. So a lot of uh, companies are coming with talent uh, marketplace. So that is also you know, one aspect of recognition, right? We are we are recognizing you, and you are getting to work on an aspect which you would probably have not you know not got the opportunity of. So you are developing skills, right? People are getting skill certified. So there are different, you know, aspects of things. And I think, you know, uh, benefits and their, uh, their, their, you know, life, their real life examples are numerous. I think all organizations are doing it. It's just the kind of rigor, the kind of, you know, extent that they have gone, they, that may vary. Fair. Amar. Absolutely. I think, uh, sorry, yeah, I want to, I've actually made a note of this uh, r and R peer uh, program online and i want to actually now build up a tool out here so i'm going to just steal that idea Great. it's fantastic so yeah. thank you for you're getting, too, you're getting too much value out of this summer i know I <laughs> amit might send me a bill for this now <laughs> so the, the one thing which i want to just mention is that you know uh, it's a philosophical point, but it's something linked to the uh, innovation part of the story. The crux of the matter is normally, you know, we say, okay, R&R, you know, HR ka responsibility and all that, you know, that, okay, just kar do, you period activity ho jayega, mahine mein cadence hai, ya teen mahine mein kuch aur hoga. And that's it. And while definitely those things are there, but a little bit of cynicism also is in this. But what I think is also equally important is when you're talking about informal and peer-to-peer, -peer, what we have tried to do is to make sure that, you know, we notice good behavior. We notice, uh, you know, positive uh, behaviors in uh, the people in the workplace. Uh, and it's important to recognize it in the moment. 
So what we have tried to do with our supervisory teams is that when you go out in the field and observe something which you feel is good, then you must at least verbally immediately recognize that for that work. When not give that person that feedback. And if we keep on doing it consistently, what it happens, that also builds camaraderie. It also builds, you know, a motivation, you know, because the goal, I think, you know, of all incentive, this program, incentive program, or you want to call it an R and R program, is to modulate behavior, right? And and one is that you can reward behavior to seen, you can do it on a stage. The other is that you can mold that behavior. So if you do it consistently and you do it in the moment, it also helps to mold that behavior. And for example, I have seen, I went to a work site particularly, you know, there's this one guy who was doing window cleaning and he was doing it in a very nice way. Like, so I, I told him and then I, I learned that thing because it was saving us time. So I then brought it back into art. So the reward is for both people. If you actually observe and search for good behavior and good work practices in your own team, and you recognize it, it sticks in your mind and you can actually build on it and pass it along. So it then permeates the culture also. So I think it's important for people to not keep it restricted to one day or one moment. Informal recognition in the moment as you're working along is something if you can get it into your supervisory teams, it will help the overall organization. So that's one example. Fantastic. You know, I'm just Talk thinking about this. Uh, I'm just thinking about this conversation and I'm kind of reminded sometimes topics which you think are so mundane and so settled, but when you start to think about it, there's just so many variables that you can think about and start to go to war on them, right? But I think this conversation has been super helpful. Amar, Vakar, I think we talked about whether it's a science versus art. We talked about whether it's strategy versus tactical versus culture. We talked of ROI and how do you isolate or attribute uh, the benefit in the outcomes to specifically r and we talked about should it be for performance versus values and uh, pretty interesting comments on when it should be for performance and when it should be on value. Uh, r and driving wrong behaviors. Uh, we talked about in the context of some of the recent media events we've heard of and some anecdotal stuff at the end. Super helpful, Amar. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vakar. Hopefully, I will see you sometime when I'm in Gurgaon. Would love to meet you and take you out for Absolutely. coffee. Thank you, Amit. It was a pleasure and I appreciate that. And Vakar, very insightful. Thank you. Big learning for me also. Thank you so much. Same, yes. Thank you, Amit. <laughs> and thank you, Amit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take you out on coffee sometime, Amar and Vakar. Yeah. Love to.